most of us have always had a fascination with either outer space or our world's inner space. We know them as oceans and lakes. Our world is covered by about two-thirds water. The Great Lakes between Canada and the USA hold some of the greatest and most desirable cold water shipwreck dives in the world. What is it that draws us to these wrecks? Why are they so well preserved? What made them sink to the bottom? How many lives were lost? Dive in with us to find out more and see real divers diving on real shipwrecks and uncovering the stories of the ghost wrecks of the Great Lakes. I'm Jim Van Lusen. I'm the owner of ASAP Home Inspections. And I'm out here diving with uh, Cause and the guys. We're all just trying to document the, the wrecks that we find here in the St. Lawrence River, uh, the Great Lakes at various depths. We're trying to keep everything within recreational diving limits for now so that everybody understands that these wrecks are really right on our doorstep. We're just really out here trying to have fun and let you show what we do, to show you what we do, why we do it, how we do it, and to let you know that you know anybody can do this. Two years ago, I had never been diving in my entire life. I am now a uh, PADI certified dive master. Hi, my name is Jim Cosmic. I'm a professional underwater cameraman. I've been diving about 50 years. I'm one of the uh, oldest certified instructors in Canada. I'm a PADI master instructor, cave, Trimax, rebuilder guy. We have a television show that's been on the television area for, uh, well, I don't know, 25 years. First show was called Sport Diver TV. Second series was called Undersea Explorer. And the present series was playing right now on uh, Animal Planet and National Geographic Wild. It's called the Blue Realm. So we're on the air every week trying to show the public the beauty of diving around the world and diving with marine animals. So that's mainly what my theme is now. I'm Travel. Peter Kostelniak. I'm 36 years old. I'm a physiotherapist by trade, but I'm a diver at heart. I started diving in 2003 on a whim before I went away to school. Uh, and then I lost touch with the sport because of money and time constraints. Uh, but I took it up again about four years ago. Uh, I've been hooked and doing it as much as possible ever since. Is that ready for the dive today, boys? Uh, it's a little windy today, but uh, Kingston is Kingston's get what you get out here. That's why there's so many shipwrecks. I think today we're gonna go east along the inner side of Amherst Island. We'll have a look at the outer gap, maybe around to the uh, shipwreck graveyard. If we can't get out there, we'll go a little bit uh, further east and, and dive maybe on the inside of Wolf Island. If you go with the weather, that's all you can do. Here. Sounds good. Hopefully we won't add one more shipwreck today to the graveyard. Well, the Sheboygan wreck, uh, unfortunately, is off to the uh, western side of Amherst. It's about uh, two or three miles out, sits about 100 feet of water. And uh, sits upright. It's a great wreck, great old schooner. It's got all the uh, rigging on the deck still there. It's got the, uh, I think the anchors are still there. I can't recall. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good training wreck. Hard, soft bottom with a, uh, a little sand and, and gravel. It's all mixed together. It's a, it's a, oh, people don't get to it much because it's a little further out. September, October, November are the wicked months in the Great Lakes. It's claimed a lot of shipwrecks, thousands of shipwrecks, even the big ones, big two meters. I think you need bigger pockets on that thing. Safety first. You got a life raft in the other one.
Welcome to the city of Sheboygan. She's a wooden schooner that is 135 feet long, 27 feet wide, that set sail for the first time on July 5th, 1871, where she was built in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Her life spanned nearly 45 years with a very tough life on the often unpredictable and sometimes violent Great Lakes. Her captain and crew of four were killed when she was caught in a horrific storm on September the 25th, 1915. The story is that local fishermen on Amherst Island had to watch the lives on board suffer a death by drowning and cold, but they were helpless as they would surely be killed trying to help in such terrible weather. It must have been a horrible feeling to feel so helpless. She is incredibly well preserved and mostly intact due to icy water conditions and the lack of oxygen at such depths. The city of Sheboygan lay lost for nearly 48 years until she was finally discovered by a team of divers in 1968. The ship's wheel and anchor have been relocated to a museum in Kingston. Please join us now as we discover one of the ghost wrecks of the Great Lakes, the city of Sheboygan. Zebra mussels are an invasive species and add tremendous weight to the wreck. They also have a good effect on the lake in that they filter a liter of water every single day. The gobies are oddly a Mediterranean saltwater fish that have adapted all too well in the Great Lakes fresh water. Unfortunately, they eat much of the food that our indigenous species also eat. The massive mass appears to have been snapped like twigs. Imagine the force that would take to snap a telephone post sized hunk of solid wood. These open holds would have held some sort of cargo and likely the crew's quarters. all the dead eyes still in place where they once pulled the ropes on these mighty sails.
windlass here is the piece of man-operated machinery that was used for winching anchors and tightening the massive ropes required to hold the powerful sails. as I fin through and over the wreck. The spirits of the people who lost their lives here, possibly still here, holding down the fort. After all, this is their gravesite. we discover things aboard the wreck, it's incredible to see the original wood and its beautiful grain that looks like it's brand new in places.
Peter swims through what may at one time have been the captain's quarters, where he and his help plotted charts and talked foolishness over a bottle of rum or other beverages at the end of the day. Although we are firm believers in take only photos and leave only bubbles, we like the fact that someone previously had found some dishes and tools and placed them on this mast so that they would not be lost to the heavy silts and mud in the area and also for the pleasure of future divers. Here you can even see where the square mast was below deck and the round section above deck and the huge piece of wood that broke away with much of its rigging intact from the tremendous force of the sinking. Looking at the exterior of the stern from here, you can see her keel with the rudder snapped off. quality of workmanship that must go into these boards to make them watertight is almost unfathomable. Just looking at the crumpled mess of huge lumber almost gives one an idea of how violently she hit the bottom. you can even see how the crew would go from the upper deck to the lower areas with the use of this small ladder. As we talk about our day's events and plot our next wrecks to dive on, we simply can't help but think there are at least 5,000 more beautiful shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. Many of them lie virtually intact and of various varieties. Schooners like this one to paddle wheelers and even giant steel freighters. We will often refer to the graveyard which is an area where many ships were scuttled and even more foundered in the rocky outcrops that lie just beneath the surface. 
We know. We hit one of them. The Marysburg Vortex may be at play in this area, where the magnetic anomalies make compasses very inaccurate and in some cases guide a ship right into the shoal. The water in the Great Lakes may be cold, the depths may be daunting, and the time on the bottom may be limited. But with proper training and planning, you can make the dive as safe as is possible. Please, boat safe and dive safe, because we want to see you out on these beautiful wrecks with us.